What is going on guys? We have an exciting video here. We got the block. If you guys missed it, we got the block assembled in the last video. Now, as you can see here, cams are going to get degreed. So we're going to have Jordan fill you in on the rest, but the heads will be on the block today. What's up everybody? We're back here today. We're going to cover camshaft degree, I'm sure. A lot of you have been waiting for that. I'm excited about it as well. I know Andrew is. And so we have all the parts laid out, everything that we're gonna pretty much need today. Cylinder heads are assembled, camshafts are here, ART 2000 head studs, boundary uh, chromoly, crankshaft sprocket, tensioners, new head dowels, timing chains, AccuFab secondaries, OEM secondary sprockets, Kometic head gaskets. And then over here we have a little bit more goodies. We got the uh, pins that we did the machine work for in the last video. These are my ARP tensioner bolts for the primaries. AccuFab secondaries. AccuFab secondary uh, spacers and washers. And then all this bling from Shelby Mike. Because we've been so busy, I <laughs> did not order the uh, new liners in time or OEM pieces to get the liners off of. So we are going to, first, we'll show you how to take these off. Very simple, and then put them on Mike's guides. Uh, but I will be replacing them before we button this thing up. So first order though, head studs got to go in. Block dowels need to go in. Head studs need a wash. I would never recommend just pulling them out of the box and uh, using them. They have a lubricant on them already. And then uh, camshafts will be washed. We will go over that a little bit more in depth once we get to that point. So let's get started. We will take these outside and then. Just a little rinse, doesn't need to be anything crazy. If you don't have a parts washer and you're doing this at home, MEK, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, acetone, brake clean, just do not let it sit like that for very long. Uh, mineral spirits will leave a nice little film on there and it will keep the rust away at least for a few days. Now the washers, you want to get really good. They'll be kind of stuck together sometimes and we don't want anything. We want them super duper dry. So when we install them on the head, so they are kind of tough to get 100% dry when you have wet hands. So what I'll do here is we're going to just throw them on this one stud and blow them off. All right, got the head studs washed. Now we're going to put in the sonar head dowels. Just tap those in place. We're just going to put a little bit of lube on our threads. I've seen some guys use Loctite before. I would not do that. If you're going to do this and use a brush like me, be sure you go check your face before you go to lunch. Because every now and then you'll get a couple little splats and ARP lube will just make you look like the uh, Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I'm just getting these close to save time. I'll come back with my ratchet and uh, kind of typically we'll bottom it out and then just loosen it up just a little bit. So just like if you're doing it by hand, you want it, you want it to be loose. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to force it to get down to the correct depth. All right, so we got the head studs in, they're all bottomed out and uh, we're gonna put the head gaskets on now. These are comedic. Alright. <clears throat> now we'll start with the driver's side. Here we go. Now these are the the washers that ARP has been shipping with the 2000 studs for maybe like the last year, year and a half. Got a little bit of a knurling on the bottom. So that's what you want to point down. Um, that should dig into the head a little bit and have a little more spin resistance than a standard washer. If you didn't see the cylinder head assembly video, these two, 
our checker springs with my custom aluminum retainers for checking valve timing. So we will have to pull the head back off and change those out. I'm gonna make sure you lube the washer just as much as the threads, it's very important. All right, so now I'm just snugging these up. We're gonna go to 30 pounds and uh, that's where it's gonna stay today for cam degree. Number two. All right, I got the keyway at nine o'clock. Two reasons I do that. One, if the keyway's at nine o'clock, the flat part of the oil pump drive is parallel to the floor, parallel to the main cap. So it's easy to line up. And also, at nine o'clock, all your pistons are safely under the deck. Two valve, three valve, four valve, doesn't matter. You can spin the cam, spin the camshaft itself. 360 degrees should have no piston valve issues. Pistons will all be down at a safe spot. So that's where we're gonna start. Um, I'm gonna put this oil pump on, then we're gonna show you how to swap over the wear strips for the chain guides and get everything mocked up and then we'll start cam degree. The last oil pump bolt's gonna go through the chain guide, so we're gonna go we're gonna go ahead and swap the uh, chain guide uh, liners over now. So this part, pull this up, pull it back. Now the opposite. Here we go. First one's done. is ready. I think I got it on the wrong side. No, it's sometimes hard to get on because everything's just a little tight. That's how we want it. If you can see here, Mike pays close attention when machining that pocket, it's got a little uh, little lip there, just like the factory for the liner to actually snap in. So it also has the cor corrected geometry here for the tensioner. Yeah, a lot of people were asking about these uh, these guides in the last video. So nicest ones on the market, in my opinion. And like I said, the geometry is correct. There's some fancy looking ones out there where this geometry is not OEM. Okay, so just to be clear, the heads are coming back off. I've only torqued them down to 30 pounds to get them snug, pretty much. Uh, the reasoning for that is I have checker springs in here and those are going to come off. So once cam degree is done, I'll actually show you guys how I'll pull the cams back off so I can pull the head off. I'm gonna swap the springs tomorrow and then uh, we're still gonna swap the liners. So while this does look like final assembly, it's not, but it's everything that you could do in final assembly. The only difference is, you know, these retainers are the bigger of the two retainers that I use on four valve heads, and they're still not big enough for a dial indicator to really sit good. This is a much better design. It's got the lip there so the radius of the ball can sit in it. So that's the reasoning for that, and uh, that's really the only reason. So 
These are my stage three blower cams, specific, specifically for the 4GT GT500. They're gonna be pretty rowdy. I'm excited. So, uh, <laughs> we'll unbox one now. I'll kind of go over uh, some paperwork stuff with these. You know, what you should do when you're unboxing them. They're gonna come in this bag and they might appear clean, but I can promise you they're not. Cam cards, stickers, install instructions. You pretty much throw the install instructions away if you're watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it will have the serial number, so typically if you order cam shafts from us, we're gonna keep the serial number on file forever. That's one good thing, you know? Your car would get stolen. It's a very, very easy way to prove that it's your vehicle or your engine. These are actually cleaner than normal. Be careful, sometimes the lobes are super sharp on the edges, but they are gun drilled, so you can see completely through them. Can we see each other? Yeah. And uh, that's a portion that needs to be cleaned. You should just go ahead and, and start and clean that. Wash any residual rust inhibitor that they had on off uh, before we put them in the engine. So, very nice though. So I'm gonna get the rest of these packed, unpacked, and then I'm gonna wash them real quick, and then Start putting them in the head. All right, so we got the guides on. We got the camshafts washed. Now we're gonna put these AccuFab nine millimeter pivot pins in. I suggest using just a little bit of red Loctite. They really never need to come out. Definitely don't want them to come loose. And they have a lot of stress on them. Alright, so last thing I'm going to do before I put the cams in, I don't know why, and I prefer to use the AccuFab secondary. Anything AccuFab makes for the secondary is by far the best thing on the planet, but they don't come marked with their links. So, Mod Motors uh, have five links between the dots, so just go like this. One, two, three, four, five. This is going to be your next link. I'll start here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do before we set the cams in and we're going to put in our uh, lash adjusters and followers. So cam degree needs to be done with a solid but adjustable lash adjuster. This one I use from Trickflow. It's the one I use in my cam degree kit. Fits great on the exhaust side for a GT500. Does not fit so great on the intake. So, there is not one available right now for the intake. Not that I know of. So you kind of got to make your own. I may offer these at some point. This is just a modified version of that that I've made on the lathe. And uh, it is adjustable as well. So what we'll do, we'll put it in a little bit low, hopefully. Put the cams in, put the followers on, and then we're going to put some preload in it. Same thing goes for GT500 followers. They're going to have the same geometry pretty much as a, four, a standard 4.6 follower, which is what you're going to have to use because there is no way to adjust it once the camshaft's in. These are just factory four valve ones. They have the oil hole. We've enlarged it just slightly. And then that way you can get your tool in there and bring them up or down to set the correct preload. So I need to put the motor up this way. All right, left side exhaust cam. Now this is how I think you should do it in assembly too. I have seen guys try to use the Ford tool that pushes the lat or the follower, you know, in. I would never do it like that. The valve stems are way too long above the retainer. So just lay the camshafts on here, find a good neutral spot for the lobes, then put all your caps on and slowly torque them down. We're not gonna have much resistance here. We got two checker springs. Typically you would have a lot of resistance. So it's something that you need to be very patient with. So pretty much the first step that we're going to do for degreeing the camshafts is finding top dead center. 
could do it with the head off, but that's still not very accurate. There's gonna be some dwell at the top. So what you're gonna do is this is kind of practice for measuring the camshaft later. When we do the camshaft degree, we're gonna be using the center line method. So the center line would be the peak of the lobe. However, it does dwell there for a while. So you measure 50 before and 50 after. We're gonna do the same thing with the crankshaft to get top dead center. So just a cheap top dead center tool. Use a flathead screwdriver to adjust it. This comes in my cam degree kit. You can just snug it up by hand. It doesn't need to be torqued down or anything. This is a crankshaft socket. Also comes in our uh, cam degree kit. It's got an adjustment on it. We want to adjust that, make sure it's tight first. It's just got a little set screw on the side here. I'm gonna snug that up. We're gonna use this for the entire portion of the cam degree, so set it, make sure it's tight, and leave it alone. All right, so here's the handy dandy Morosa degree wheel. It's gonna go on here. We're just gonna snug it up for a second. And then this is what I use for a pointer. A lot of guys use like welding wire or welding rod or any little thing that's flimsy. This is nice and solid. It is a multi-tool for a paint gun, I believe, with a timing cover bolt and a couple other uh, nuts on there just to jam it up. Probably put it right here. I actually think I'm going to put this one on first. Sometimes it'll sit in the back. It's easier if it sits in the back. So we'll make it sit in the back for now. I'm just gonna line it up with a number. Any number's fine. Just wanna get the right angle. Now we're gonna test for top dead center. So, we're already at nine o'clock. Everybody knows it. 10 o'clock, top dead center. So, I'm just gonna leave the wheel just like this though. Go as far right as possible. And it may want to go all the way around because we haven't adjusted the piston stop yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back. If we haven't touched it in a 30 or 40 degrees, then it's not going to be close enough. And we will adjust it. I'm just going to adjust this piston stop a little bit. Put it down in the hole a little bit more. Looks like we're going to have to add a little bit more travel to it until we're coming up on it. And uh... All right, there we go. You're stopped at 21 and a half. Now we want to get a reading on the other side. We're at 21 and a half. Here we are at 67 and a half. So we need to take the difference between those two. 67.5 minus 21.5 is 46. Divide that by two. 23 plus 21.5 is gonna be 44.5. Where 44.5 is right now is actually top dead center. So. We will go there and then we will adjust. Let me open. 
loosen this up a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna loosen this up now so I can get to where I need to be for top dead center. We will readjust and then we will recheck. I said 44 and a half, right? We'll simply loosen the wheel. And snug it up at zero. Now what I want to do, we'll put it like at like, well, I don't even know if we need to go that much. We'll put it around 10 right now. And then I'm going to snug it up. farther all right so we are just before nine I would say that's about eight and three quarter eight and seven eighths so that's what we're gonna want to see on this side if we do we have a good top dead center if we don't we will adjust Would say that's about nine and a quarter so I'm just barely off so really and truly we want to be right at nine and I think that'll be good so I will adjust this we're within about a quarter of a degree right now tighten her up all right and then I just want to make sure I'm at nine on the other side So our top dead center is set, and we will not have to mess with it, hopefully for the duration of this. And that's how I find top dead center. So now what I'm going to do, install the secondary uh, tensioners, secondary chains, and then we will uh, finagle the timing chains on here. We may take it off again, I'm not sure. These are the AccuFab, uh, this is the AccuFab secondary driver's side tensioner. We done these for a long time this spring, but they are worth the wait. You know, I understand that money doesn't grow on trees. This is a very expensive setup. Between the chains and the tensioners, you're just a little bit over $900 for both sides. If you want to be balling on a budget, at least do the passenger side, and then at least do the chains. Uh, the driver's side really doesn't have the geometry issue that the passenger side does. But it, it is a lot better. It does sit metal to metal. This one has a nice o-ring and is billet steel, but it's expensive. So if you had to not get something, I would say it would be the uh, the driver side tensioner. You could just use an OEM one. Well, the easiest way to do it right here. primary we'll go here typically you would have a spacer but we are using the AccuFab stuff and so this is the built-in spacer and washer for the intake cam this is very similar to OEM but it's a lot thicker you know the whole theory is that you if you have the spacer here and a washer you're flexing the washer in the front a little bit whereas this is completely encapsulated same thing here better material thicker material it's going to have a better clamping load all around the the gear all right so just a little bit of arp lube on the threads and under the head Now the only way to really improve this timing chain setup, in my opinion, 
would be to run the navigator style stuff. That would require changing your valve covers on a GT500 though. For some reason, Ford wanted to put these smaller primary sprockets and chains, something to do with the valve covers I had heard, but I think it's kind of silly. So there are no adjustable primary camshaft sprockets for the GT500. That's why we hope comp gets them really close for us. <laughs> but if not, we can always uh, file the keyway just a little bit. And this retention system is, it doesn't even need a keyway. The keyway is literally just for lining everything else up before you torque it. All right, so now we're ready to put on the primary chain for the left side uh, cams. And I'm gonna have to take this degree wheel off to get the chain on there. So what I've done, pull your piston stop up. I will just leave it in there for now in case you need to verify later. You can take the wheel off, just remember where you left off. So like right now, I'm at nine o'clock. And the reason I'm at nine o'clock is if I need to turn one of these camshafts more than a few degrees, I do not want to have valve to piston contact. So I'm at 45 here. I'm gonna take this off and I'll make sure I put it back on 45. I think that's going to be hard to see, but you, there is a slot here where you can see it. Now something for everybody at home. 4-6 stuff is easy. There's one dark link here, one dark link here. Top and bottom. 5-4 stuff, GT500 stuff, it's two and one. One goes at the bottom, two splits the dot at the top. And my dot is way, way over there, and that's exactly why. We put the pistons up under the deck. What we'll do to move it. All right, so what, all we're gonna do is grab the camshaft here to get the dot pointing up. And we need to pull this pin out of the tensioner too. It's, it's really thin. I'm gonna use some pliers for that. Got the tummy dot up. All right, so what I've done, it, it is a little bit hard to see where the timing dot is with this piece on. I suggest marking it beforehand. I have it marked now. So we got the dot split here. Let me get this off. Okay. But I'm not near where I need to be here. So I'm going to go ahead and move that counterclockwise. All right. Got my dot lined up. So, I have seen some guys, you know, they do cam degree with uh, little ratchets that hold this instead of the, uh, hold the, the guides. They'll just ratchet them between each other. And that's just to keep them static. I'm not going to do that here. We're going to use the ratcheting mechanism foot as our stop. And what you'll want to do is once you have the chain on the sprockets, just go counterclockwise on the camshaft. And that will put all the tension here and give you all the slop here. And it, you may be able to get it just a little bit tighter. Now you don't want to go super tight, but there we go. We got one little extra piece out of there. Now, something also to note. I was talking about incorrect geometry earlier. This is the correct geometry. As you can see, this foot of the ratcheting mechanism is completely flush and at the correct angle on the guide. Some other guides on the market are not and it will simply snap the foot right off. So we got this part portion done. Uh, I will put the trigger wheel or the degree wheel back on, but first I'm gonna set up my dial indicators and adjust, uh, adjust the lash here. All right, so now we're gonna put the degree wheel back on, set it back at 45, which is where it was before. So we're going to have to rotate this just slightly. I am having to rotate this because my camshaft is on not on the base circle for the checker spring so when you go to put your preload on it you're going to do that off the base circle all right that's going to take me a few minutes i got to get my dial indicator set up up here um and then we'll be ready to go. All right, so I got my dial indicator set up. Now one thing to keep in mind is it's best to set the dial indicator when it's 
on the base circle or close to the base circle of the camshaft. For those of you that don't know what the base circle is, that is when the camshaft is closed or the, when the valve is closed, I'm sorry. One thing you wanna make sure is that it's steady. Um, I mean, it, it will move if you wiggle it like this, but you wanna be able to go back to the same spot. So right now we're like just past uh, 11. or within a thou or so, ending up in the same spot. Same thing over here. Now, one more thing to consider is that you need to know the lift of the camshaft. If you have a 550 lift camshaft, you wanna you know, probably set it to at least like six, 650 of preload on here. If you don't, the valve's gonna start to open and your dial indicator's gonna quit reading. So, that's the, just one little other tip. Um, now I'm going to set the preload. I like to add about two thousandths of preload. So right now, there's zero preload. The follower is wiggling. Let's see if this one I crafted earlier is worthy of being adjusted in the head. Alright, now, if you want to come over here and look at the gauge. Alright, so... We're just going to creep up on it and put a two thou preload. Oh. Alright, I do need to move the engine just a little bit and get it fully on the base circle for the exhaust one. Exhaust one's tight, so I'm gonna loosen that. So we're on the base circle. We're just gonna add two degree or two thou preload. And move. All right, now we are ready for preliminary reading. Look at the cam card real quick. So your lobe separation angle, a lot of people only really know that when they're talking about camshafts. Lobe separation angle is literally just the mean, the middle of the two. So this one is a 115 plus three. It means the intake center line is 112. Exhaust center line is 118. When you advance the intake camshaft, the number goes down. When you advance the exhaust camshaft, the number goes up vice versa when you are retarding. So, with a four valve, you really pick your lobe step angle. We're really just setting the intake center line and the lobe step angle is simply a byproduct. So, let's get started. I, I haven't snugged these up and I, 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 I typically just barely snug them when we're degreeing, so I will go ahead and snug them up now. Uh, we'll get a reading for both, so we'll start with the intake. That's fine. And this is just a preliminary reading. So you're going to go all the way until it stops. That should be the top. We will verify. And it's going back the other way. All right. So, so that's one when th the valve is completely open? or Max opening, yep. One thing I always do, I always go back at least 30 or 40 thousandths. Um, and go clockwise. You always want to go clockwise. All right, so that number right there, that's our, that's where we need to have our zero at. Max open. Yeah. That's when we don't want the piston to be up. So our first reading is going to be at this 50. However, I'm going to go back 150 so I can get good rotation and preload on the chain in the right direction. All right. Our first number is 82 and a half. Our second number is 153. 
So 82 and a half, 153. All right, we're at 117. Ew, that's no good. All right, let's see where our exhaust is. Man, we're gonna get lucky. Look at that. It's right on zero. Right on zero, how about that? Same thing. Go back past 50. Go around another time. And 50 exactly. Yeah, so we're kind of. We're kind of backwards here. We're going to need to advance it pretty decent. So, so we're at 112 and a half on the exhaust, 117 and a half on the intake. That's a five degree split, so two and a half. So we're at, we're at a 115 low step angle. We're just the wrong direction. So we're going to need to, we're going to need to add five and a half degrees of advance here. With that being said, I really don't need to split these apart. What I mean by split apart is there's some slop in the factory secondaries. So if you ever need to widen the lobe step angle, you can literally have somebody help you. All you need to do, keep the crankshaft, you know, static and literally pull one of the cams away from the other one and snug the bolt back up. That will make a difference. There's probably two degrees of slop in the factory sprockets either way. So you just need to encourage them which direction to go. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm literally just looking to advance. I am going to loosen this primary bolt and I'm going to try to advance the camshaft in relation to the crank, which would be the same as retarding the crankshaft in relation to the camshaft, which is gonna be the easier route for me right now. So loosen here, make sure the camshaft's not moving. We're going counterclockwise off the crank and then we'll snug the bolt back up. Okay. Let's see if that made a difference. I have a feeling that we will have to file the primary sprocket just ever so slightly. Well, let's see where we're at here. We're close to the intake, we'll go, we'll do the intake first. So that 117, I, I want that number to get smaller, for sure. All right, there's the 50 we're gonna read at. We'll go back 150. All right, 79.5, it's a little bit better. And 150 and a half, sorry. So that's 230. We're at 115 right now. So we've got, we've gained two and a half degrees just from that little thing. So that's good. Um, we'll check the exhaust. The exhaust is at 112 and a half. So I'm guessing the exhaust will be at 115 exactly. And if that is so, then my whole, that will all make sense. Okay, we're at 150 and a half, or sorry, easy to get confused there, 149 and a half. <clears throat> and just about 75. So yeah, we're right there. We're right about 115 on both of them. So I will need to advance the primary. And the only way to do that is going to be filing the keyway on the primary. Uh, so we will take this apart, go do that real quick, come back, and we should be able to, to finish it right here. All right, so I've just literally taken the primary chain off and just loosened this, and you can see how much slop there is. 
So what we're going to try, we're going to try this one more time. We're going to snug it up to its max. See what we can do there. So. so you think that's like a few degrees right there? That's definitely a few, a few degrees. Maybe three total. So we'll just, When you're advancing the camshaft, like I said, you're moving the camshaft clockwise in reference to the crank. This would be in reference to the crank, so we're actually pulling this backwards. And we'll just snug it. If anyone complains about the price on a cam degree, chains on, chains off, measurements, there's a lot of time involved in it. A ton. But you can actually ship cams out, you know, degreed, right? I can. I don't advertise doing that for four valves at the moment, but it is definitely something that we can do. And, uh, I may add that to the lineup here shortly. I actually just got a spare coyote motor set up in the assembly room and we will be able to lock out coyote camshafts once I make some lockout plates. Ship you camshafts already degreed on a mock-up engine, all you have to do is bolt them in. I've tested that hundreds of times. It's typically within a half of a degree, which is a lot closer than anybody's going to get it. All right, so we made our adjustments. Now we're just checking to see if that was worthwhile or not. All right, so we got everything put back together. I actually rechecked top dead center just to make sure everything's good. We just made the minor adjustment that you saw earlier of advancing the camshaft at the primary. We haven't touched, we haven't machined anything on the primary yet. So let's see if that made, made a difference. I repeat number again. So at zero, go back a little bit. Hmm. First number is 76. So we gained something there. Second number is 151 and a half, 113 and three quarter, not quite 112. So that is what I'm looking for, 112. Um, so we will take this apart one more time. I'm gonna take probably, I don't know, eight to 10 thou out of the key of the sprocket and that will be enough to get us to 112. All right, so I got a little file, fits here pretty good. So we are going to be filing down on this side. This side will allow the camshaft to be counterclockwise more. If you wanted to retard it, you would do it on this side. So this gear is really hard, so this takes a little bit. You just got to be patient. You probably can't even see where I filed. I filed about eight, eight to ten thou, I'd say, off of here. Not very much. And... Uh, Oops. Give this a shot and see if that's enough. All right, so we're back. We filed the gear just a little bit. Put it on. When I put it on, I clocked it as far counterclockwise as it could be because that would make the camshaft more advanced. So let's see what we have here. Hopefully, that was enough. We're to a zero. Let me go back a little bit. First 50, 74, we were at 76 before, so that seems pretty good. And 149, 111 and a half. I'm looking for 112, so I'm very, very happy with that. We're gonna get closer than that, but I wanna check the exhaust side and make sure the exhaust is making the same changes, so. Uh, if all is the same, we would get a reading of 118 and a half on the exhaust. So we'll see how close that is. All right, 157. And 82. 119 and a half. 
I'm looking for 118, so we're close. We're a degree and a half off on the exhaust, a degree on the intake. So all I'm going to do is loosen this sprocket, bring it back just a little bit, and then we'll double check. All right, so right now we're at 119 and a half, 111 and a half, half of a degree off on the intake. Really no worry, but I'm picky, so we'll get it to 112. Here I'm a degree and a half. That's quite a little bit. So I've just loosened this. Everything else is here. We're kind of on a, a dead spot as far as base circles go. So I'm going to use the intake camshaft because I can't get to the exhaust from here. And I'm just going to just go back just a tad as I snug this up. The intake we can loosen and advance itself later if this retards it too much. So if we get the full degree and a half here, this is going to go to 113. This will be so 111 and a half, 119 and a half. We're going to add a de degree and a half of retard to it. That goes from 119 to 118 here, but takes the 111 and a half and makes it 113. You probably didn't even just see it move, it just barely, barely moved. We are at 155 and 80. 117 and a half. So we're really, really, really close right now. Barely touched it before, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. We're just barely gonna touch it. We're going clockwise now though. That was probably too much. And then we got the same thing, 155. 155 and 80, same exact result. Let's check the intake, see where that is. All right, we're about 74 and three quarter. 111 and three quarter. So <laughs> we're a quarter of a degree off here, half of a degree off here. We're really, really, really good right now. All right, so here's what I do when I'm only half a degree off. You really need to be able to read that degree. So I'm actually gonna use the degree wheel. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back on the degree wheel. Because if we move to the degree wheel, in relation to the camshaft and we're moving the degree wheel back then we're advancing the camshaft. I'm only looking for half of a degree right here. So this is pretty much perfect. So as you can see here uh, we're not t we're not perfectly right in the middle but we're close enough. So all I'm going to try to do is loosen this move it to it's just inside this line and that should be our half of a degree. There are many ways to manipulate this. Move just a tiny bit. Yep, just a hair. That should be money though. Alright, All right, we'll check the exhaust if it's on its way around. First number is like 155 and a quarter. And I would say that's about 79 and a quarter. About 117 and a quarter now. So, need to go back and advance it just a little bit. All right, I just did one little more adjustment here. I went by about half, another half of a degree. And we'll go back and check it. Still on the exhaust side. About 155 and three quarter, 156. That's 118. If you wanted to look at that as 156, 
you wanted to look at it as 156 to 3 quarter and it's one, uh, 117 and 7 eighths. So we'll call this good here. We do need to verify the intake cam. Then we need to torque the bolts and then we need to re-verify. Okay, so right now the, the two numbers that I got added up to 226, that's 113. So I need to get this down to 112. So one more degree of advance on the intake without touching the exhaust. How do you do that? You use the factory slap and the secondary sprocket. We're gonna pretty much do the same exact thing. Uh, we're just going to retard the degree wheel one degree, which would advance the camshaft one degree. And we'll go from there. All right, so my Chrysler wrench is snug against the valve cover rail. Gonna loosen this bolt. All right, so that's gonna keep this steady while we go backwards here, which would advance that in relation to the crankshaft. So. All right, all right, we're at 75 and a half for the first reading. That looks promising. It's a half a degree off the last one. And 149 and a half. That's it, buddy. 112. Spot on. Spot on. So I'm gonna torque these up and then uh, we're gonna re-verify. Then I think we're gonna call it a day. It, this is time consuming and uh, it probably will take you, I wouldn't say I'm the best in the world, but I've done a lot of these. It, should, it could take you anywhere from 45 minutes to four hours. It just depends how bad the thing fights you. And like, there is no adjustment here. There's no adjustable crank gears. There's no adjustable camshaft sprockets. So, and I would not, I would not advise using any of the multiple key weight uh, uh, secondary sprockets that used to be available from Koi's. Not unless you want some broken uh, timing chains. This is the best timing chain setup, in my opinion. AccuFab everything. All right, so we got the, uh, Driver's side all wrapped up. We torqued it. Andrew couldn't film that because he was actually helping me. So typically what you can do is just take a crescent wrench, let it lay on the other cam, torque one, take the crescent wrench, let it lay against the valve cover rail, torque it. But since I have all my dial indicators in the way, if something moved, I don't have to reset all of them up. So I had Andrew help me on this side. Uh, the one thing I want to touch on is timing chains. You watch me manipulate some of the valve events, you know, by doing different things pulling the chain this way, pulling the chain that way. That's all good. Do not use the chain as a tool to torque the bolts. That is a no-no. These are here for a reason. You, if you don't have, if you're not comfortable with laying the crescent wrench down or, or a wrench to hold it down on the other camshaft or on the valve cover rail, have somebody help you. Um, but do not depend on the timing chains to hold 100 foot pounds of torque. It's just not good for them. We are going to do the, uh, I'm going to do the other side tomorrow by myself just because it is time consuming. Um, I mean, we've been filming today for probably four hours between setting everything up, putting the heads on and stuff. So I'm going to do that. And then uh, I think Tuesday this week, uh, Andrew and I are going to wrap this thing up. We're going to put the valve covers on, timing cover on. Um, he's got an ATI balancer on that we're going to be putting on. And we will introduce my a new product. It's something I don't sell on, on the website right now, but we've been using it in some race cars. It's a S7 tool steel uh, oil pump gear. And uh, that's what's going in here. We'll have them for sale on the website. As I said before, any questions, uh, feel free to ask. We'll try to cover them in the next video. Uh, the next video, you know, besides like valve covers and timing cover, we'll be setting the oil pump clearance and we'll talk about that and how that's so important. Yeah, I need to talk to Mike about, you know, getting the product on our website, but I definitely think, uh, you know, it's something I would like to do if he's willing and uh, he makes a great product. Absolute fantastic product. And uh, be sure to check out his website, shelbymikeracing.com or follow him on Facebook. He's always posting super cool stuff. So most of this, if you guys are not familiar with machining, I think Mike does almost all of this on a three axis uh, CNC mill. It's absolutely nothing fancy. He's just good at tool pathing and fixturing.
Yeah, there were a few people asking about, you know, if they could ship to, uh, there was one person that asked if it could be shipped to Australia. So Absolutely. I'm sure. Absolutely. Mike doesn't want to fiddle with ship to Australia. We ship all over the world. It doesn't matter if it is a gasket or a complete long block. Any continent besides Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, that's zero problems. Just shoot us an email. Uh, I prefer emails over Facebook, Instagram messages. I don't, none of that. Um, but shoot us an email. Let us know what you're looking for. Even if it's not on the website, if it's module related, we'll get it for you. Um, that is not a problem at all. Looking forward to getting this thing buttoned up and we should see you guys here in a couple of days.